Thank you. I wanted to start with Mr. Mehta. Um, I wanted to get more clarity on Amazon's practice of commingling inventory from different sellers. Under this practice, from what I understand, consumers purchasing a product from a third party seller or even from Amazon directly may unknowingly receive a product supplied by a different seller. And I think that can create serious problems when unsafe counterfeit products are mixed together with authentic goods. I wrote to Amazon on this issue before, but really did not receive an adequate response. So let me ask uh, yes or no, Mr. Mehta. Does Amazon commingle inventory from different sellers? Uh, thank you, Chairman Pallone, for the question. Um, by I'm the only word, trying to make it quickly because I, I have to go to Mr. Uh, I have another series of questions for. The question of commingling often is used to refer to our practice of virtually tracking different units that are identical and shipping the one closest to a customer. Um, yes, we do engage in that practice okay. um, as part of our fulfillment. All right. So um, is there any way for customers to be sure that they are getting the product supplied by the seller they see listing the product or to know when they aren't? Uh, thank you for the question. So when we virtually track products and deliver I, the, the program is designed to deliver the identical product that is closest to a customer. We do this because it allows us to deliver products to customers faster. We allow any one of our sellers to opt out if they don't. Well, I mean, I think the answer is no, right? You, you may not be able to, uh, if you, you know, in other words, like example, I'll go on and I'll see a book that I want to buy, right? Now, it may be new, it may be old, various qualities. Presumably, if you're buying the older one, you're not going to switch that. I would assume, right? Uh, we do not um, uh, virtually track and uh, ship the nearest product for used products, as every used product is different. All right, but with new products, presumably, um, it would be the one from the seller, but it may not be. That's what you're saying, and that's the problem. Well, what I would say is the root of the problem is if there was ever a counterfeit or unsafe product in our store, the root of the problem is how did that product get available for sale? How was it ever shipped into our fulfillment centers? And that is where we put our energy and how we proactively right. But I mean, I do think it's a problem. I, don't, I think the answer is no. There's no way for customers to be sure they are getting their products applied to sell what they see listed or know when they aren't. The answer is no at this point. Correct? Uh, currently, we do not display anything okay. to customers. That would All right, and let me issue this. In your testimony, you say that you proactively provide refund, refunds for any co consumers who received a counterfeit product. If the inventory is commingled, how do you know which consumers receive the counterfeit or unsafe product? Thank you for the question. Again, we refer to this as virtual tracking. For every unit in our fulfillment centers, we know where the source of that unit was and where it was sent to. And so, so a person get would get a refund if they want it. I'm sorry? I didn't... In other words, if I say, look, I'm concerned that the product is counterfeit or it's unsafe, you know, I can always get a refund, right? Uh, every purchase in our store is protected by our A to Z guarantee. And so regardless of whether Amazon sold the product or a seller sold the product, if a customer has a problem and the seller doesn't take care of them, Amazon will take care of them. In addition, if a customer doesn't come to us and we learn of a counterfeit, we know the source of that inventory and we know right. the customer that purchased so it. So you give them the refund. refund customers. The prob the, I mean, I think you're saying I'll give them the refund, but the problem is how are they going to know? I mean, that's the problem because you don't... Have any? There's no way for the, for them to know for sure uh, whether that product was supplied by a given cell. They may not know it's counterfeit. A customer may be able to determine this. A rights owner may tell us, or we may detect it on our own. There's a variety of means. Maybe, maybe. All right, all right, Mr. Myers. You stated in your testimony, keeping up with all the unscrupulous sellers on online marketplaces is like a game of whack-a-mole. You shut one down only for another to pop up. You also say that online marketplaces should adopt better policies to address repeat offenders and make sure they're kicked off marketplaces for good. Just tell me, what are some policies online marketplaces could implement to accomplish this? You know, how effective are you at, uh, you know, are they at accomplishing this uh, and, and preventing unsafe counterfeit products from reaching consumers? Sure, and I think one of the things and the issues are that counterfeiters, the incentives that they have are, are, are mainly profit, not about, it's not about safety, and so it's a, it's a significant issue. And so we think if you look at the sellers, who, who are actually selling the actual products, and there's better vetting done of who they are, actually knowing that they're a reputable business and there's something behind the particular ent entity, 
In addition, you know, the repeat of offender problem, I mentioned that in my opening statement, but that's a significant issue. A lot of times um, individuals who sell counterfeit products will have multiple listings, will have multiple sort of stores within marketplaces, and it's difficult to, for uh, an outsider, not the marketplace necessarily, to understand what's going on and how prolific um, that, and how quickly that seller can actually repost something. But also for, for consumers, better identity of who the sellers actually are. Who, who am I buying something from and understanding who that entity is? So in some marketplaces, that's difficult to determine, as well as notifications when a counterfeit is identified, letting the consumer know that something they purchased was counterfeit. Um, and then information sharing with marketplaces such that we can together build criminal, um, criminal cases together, that would be helpful um, to do as well. And then finally, there are certain high risk categories of products where we have found in our test buy programs are highly counterfeited and that they also present safety issues. And those are areas we'd love to have a different way to focus on those types of products where authenticity is really something that we should you know, increase the rigor of our review prior to those being listed on a marketplace, for example. Um, there's also other things that can be done. Um, you know, I think this hearing is great. Again, I think have, creating an opportunity for the public to learn more about the counterfeiting problem. Um, I think more, re more resources for um, law enforcement and customs. We work considerably with both agencies and I think more resources there would be incredibly valuable. Design rights, design patents. Today in customs, today, today in customs, um, you, you cannot use design rights to address a counterfeit problem. And it's a situation in which, you know, the, uh, counterfeiters become more sophisticated and they will remove trademarks from your the, the counterfeited product so you can't use your trademark or copyright potentially to address the issue. So having okay. design, design rights is another tool. The gentleman's time has expired.